Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be carving this little bird. It is known as a tufted titmouse. And we're going to be carving it with a turned head. And we're going to be using this book. Songbird Bird Carving by Rosalind Leach Daisy. This is a great book. That's her. Now this book has a couple of different patterns in it for carving a bird with a turned head. One way is to actually, when the bird's in the profile stage like this, cut the head off, find the center, turn the head and glue it back on. And the other way is to cut out your blank with a turned head and carve it all out of one piece. We're gonna be doing it the easier way. We're going to chop the head off, turn it, and glue it back on. That way we're working with the grain and it's not as fiddly as um, cutting the blank out and having to work with all this grain changing the head being uneven in the pattern this book will explain it but it is a little more difficult to cut it all out of one piece of wood doable but a little more difficult i have my basswood here so let's get started. All right, so here I cut out the pattern. I used the hobby knife right there. And I'm putting the top one on first. And the reason is it's got these lines here. Now, not all patterns do, but like I said, this is a good book. And these lines will determine the placement of the bird here because it, it could be to line up, you know, it could go like this, any of these positions, or like this. So these lines here will carry down this way once this is glued in place and that will determine how I place this pattern. So when I cut it, it all lines up together. I'm not cutting off the tip of the beak and I'm not cutting off the tip of the tail. This is chipboard by the way. Uh, on the back of legal pads or on the back of a desk calendar. Um, it has chipboard, which is thin, hard cardboard. If you don't have uh, a cutting pad, one of those self-healing cutting pads, I do downstairs, but you can always use this stuff. It's good. Your knife won't go through it if you're cutting light enough to cut out patterns like this. Of course you could use scissors too, but uh, I always use number 11, uh, exacto blade style cutter. So the pattern's glued on. I used the stick glue here, glued it on, got it centered so there's space on either side it's right in the middle and I carried these lines from the pattern over onto the block of wood and down the side and what 
that is going to allow me to do is when I glue this guy on there to make sure that everything lines up and the key points are the tip of the tail, this set of primary feathers, this set of feathers, and the tip of the beak. And those lines line up with up here. We're gonna cut out this pattern first, specifically. And it's important that we do this one first. So we'll cut this one out first and we'll keep the bottom piece and in the top piece, the waste wood, and it's gonna become a cradle to hold this in. But while the sides are flat and 90 degrees, that's when we're gonna cut the head off. Really important. If you have an uneven piece of wood that doesn't have a flat 90 degree angle, um, this might not be the right project to do. You need this to be flat, square. So when you cut this, you have literally, you'll have a square to work with. If not, it just becomes too daggone hard to mess with. All right. Time for the bandsaw. Here we are at the bandsaw. I'm taking this extra little piece of wood off here just to make it easier to work with. And with this blade being wide like that, the straight cuts are very easy. Doing the rounded cuts, you see, I've got to work on it a little bit. Pull it back, come forward again. It just takes a little bit more patience, but you can still cut those curves. I do have a bandsaw with a 1 8 inch blade on it. If, if I were doing anything that had a tighter radius than this bird, I would definitely uh, take it over to that bandsaw. But I do use this bandsaw for straight cuts. It does beautiful straight cuts. You will see when I get to the crest of the head, there is an undercut there. And I'll have a bit of an issue with it. And I end up removing that piece of wood completely. But it's okay because the surrounding area is almost like a bridge. And so you really don't need that. So right there, you can see the extra wood and I will just remove it right here and the supporting wood is there around it so it's not an issue this works out beautifully So here's what we got so far. Here's our blank. Here's our top pattern. We will put this back on when we cut out the top pattern for the bird. Here's our blank. And here's the bottom piece. We'll use this as a sled. We'll put the blank back into the sled and cut the body part out on the bandsaw. That'll give us roughly the bird shape. 
Now you can see this area up here, it worked out good. I was able to get into that undercut and clear out this wood and it did not affect the way the, uh, the top pattern is presented. It's still nice and flat. This will work out beautifully. All right, so now it's time to cut the head off. What I'm gonna do is right about where the shadow line in is, is gonna be the most narrow part of the neck. This part covers the ear and is the widest part of the head. So you, you don't wanna cut across this. You want to come in like right in here, but we want a straight line. So let's set this aside for now, because this is how we're going to cut it on the band. So we're just going to plop it down just like that. Let's draw our line and get it close to That's going to be our cut line. So we'll cut this on the bandsaw. And then we'll put it back on here and cut out the top profile. And just so you can see it, here's a picture of the book. This is how it, it's explained in the book. Wonderful book, get it if you can. All right, so that went well. So what we wanna do is make sure that this is flat and this is flat. Being the bandsaw, it won't always cut flat. And I can see light right about there. So this cut has a little bit of a dip in it, which means that's got a little bit of a bow in it. So what we're gonna do is with sandpaper, put it on a very flat surface and sand both these pieces extremely flat. We'll find the center and put these back together with the head turned the way we want it. Okay, so I'm sanding on this and you can definitely see um, the wood here and here has been sanded, but there's the little divot in the middle here. And this is exactly opposite. There's a little bit of a bump here and this wood hasn't been touched yet. So I just have sandpaper sitting on my tabletop, saw tabletop, and I'm sanding like this. Same with this one. I have the sandpaper on my tabletop and just sanding like that. And just be patient, and you'll get it nice and flat and it will be obvious when you get it flat. So we've sanded these smooth. They don't have to be perfect. And you can take a straight edge Tilt it forward, create a shadow, and look down through here to see if it's flat. If you see light on the other side, you know you've got a little bit more work to do. So what we're going to do is find the center of both of these pieces by 
drawing an X corner to corner. Okay, so you want to draw from corner to corner an X, which will be your center on the head and on the body. And you're going to drill a hole here, and that's going to be our pivot point for the turned head. All right, so we taped the block together with a little bit of scotch tape. And scotch tape seems to be fine. It doesn't gum up the saw blade or anything like that. And the reason why we do that is we want to put everything back together and cut out this profile. And now, of course, when we get up to the head, um, the head it will have to do later. Uh, but this will give us the, the blank for the body. All right, so I've been to the bandsaw and I cut out the top profile now. So let's see what happens when we remove the waste wood. We have the blank. I won't need that anymore. The blank for the body. And we'll drill a hole here and here and insert a pin or a wire and that'll give us the pivot of the head. And we can start transferring measurements from the top pattern of the head onto the blank and get that down to shape. All right, so our next objective is to drill a hole in these center points that is straight in and the easiest way to do that you can you can try to chuck up this in the drill and try to drill as straight as you can but it's very hard to just try to judge so you can try to you know use a square and try to drill in and make sure you're going exactly 90 degrees. But a really easy way to do it is one of these little blocks. Now, I, I think I got this at, at Harbor Freight for a couple of dollars. But what it does when you drill, you drill through that and it makes sure that you are at 90 degrees. So what I would do here is I would chuck up this drill bit and place it here and hold it into place and slide that down and then drill the hole. And that would keep that drill bit at 90 degrees for both of these. Place it on there, slide it down, you're right at 90 degrees. For, for something small like this that, that is not square, 90 degrees, you can't put it on a drill press. These little blocks are great. <clears throat> now this is one eighth. That's the smallest hole and just happens that a bamboo skewer fits that beautifully. Bamboo skewer is actually stronger than a dowel the same size because of the fibers that run with the bamboo dowel or bamboo skewer is uh, all the grain goes the same way. It's all running lengthwise, which makes it pretty strong. But it also makes it hard to break. It breaks very fibery. It will not break straight. See how fibery it gets. So a little trick on cutting that is when you need to Cut it is cat fingernail clippers. Works beautiful.
to be glued into place. All right, so the only thing left to do is glue the bird's head on. Now I'm using Type Bond wood glue. It's uh, it, it's a decent wood glue. Any yellow carpenter's wood glue will work. And try to use a reference to where um, the head is turned properly. You don't want to, you know, crank it too far around to where it's uh, not realistically feasible. But uh, Use some reference, get a good turn. It'll put a lot of personality into the bird. So hope this video was helpful and useful. Please like, share, subscribe. Join me next time and we'll carve this little bird. I'll see you next time.